I am Dr. Eric Small. I'm a pediatric sports medicine specialist at Mount Sinai. My office practice is in Scarsdale, New York. I have been treating tennis players and young athletes for more than 20 years. I actually played college tennis and helped put myself through medical school by teaching tennis. And so from years of playing on the court in college and in my 30s, 40s, and 50s, I have come up with five tips that it can improve the junior's performance as well as the parents, as well as adults. So we'll get right into the first tip. One of the biggest things for not reaching your optimum performance is having a chronic nagging injury, such as elbow pain or shoulder pain or low back pain. Those are the three most common injured body parts from overuse in tennis. So tip number one is get your injuries checked out and rehabilitated by a sports medicine specialist. You're not, you do not want to be playing through pain. So that is tip number one. Tip number two is when you're not injured, you should have what we call a tennis athlete profile. So that is a measure of the athletes, the tennis athletes strength, the upper body strength, the rotator cuff strength, the lower body strength, which would be quads, hamstrings, and core. So an assessment of the strength as on the dominant side compared to the non-dominant side. So that would be strength. In addition, one needs to look at the upper and lower body flexibility. If there's a flexibility deficit in the shoulder or the hamstring, this leads to decreased power on the serve or on the forehand or the backhand, can also lead to injury. So we want to optimize our strength and our flexibility. So that is point number two, receiving a tennis athlete profile. Tip number three is optimizing one's nutrition and hydration plan and strategies. So often when one plays in two rigorous matches in a day, often at the end of the second set or at the end of the second match, there's cramping or fatigue. So ideally, one should have a pregame meal strategy and a postgame meal strategy. The pregame meal should consist of 500 to 800 calories. This should be consumed one to one and a half hours prior to playing. It should be low in fat and high in carbohydrates. So a peanut butter sandwich with some fruit, a yogurt and energy bar with fruit would be an adequate pre-game meal. And it should be consumed an hour to an hour and a half prior to competing. The post-game meal or post-match or post-training meal should be consumed one hour post-match. This is to ensure that the energy stores or the glycogen stores in the muscles are replenished. So there are many tennis players who have cramped in the third set or in a tiebreaker. Their muscles don't have enough energy in them. So ensuring the pre-game meal is good and the post-game meal uh, is good. That will ensure optimum performance and not cramping. But what about hydration? Should we drink sports drinks or just water? If we're planning on doing intense exercise lasting more than one hour, which most two out of three sets or certainly in the professional ranks, three out of five sets, they're playing more than an hour. So they do need electrolytes more than just water. So diluted fruit juice or a sports drinks would be adequate. Now, under the age of 14, children do not have as advanced thirst mechanisms as adults. So if they say they're thirsty, they're already about 5% dehydrated. So a rule of thumb, a half hour before a tennis match or a half hour before training, the young tennis player should drink eight ounces beyond their thirst level, be that water or a sports drink. And then they should be drinking 12 ounces every 30 minutes or so per competitive play. That is tip number three, ensure nutrition and adequate hydration. Tip number four is to be mentally tough. So often there are bad calls in a match um, and we can't let a bad call affect our performance. We need to maintain our focus. 
So we have to go into a match expecting that there are bad line calls and be able to redirect ourselves. The other mental aspect of this is to play our best on key points, such as in match point, or if we're down a break point, we, may, we need to maintain that mental focus. It's often good to, to write in a notebook how we did in tiebreakers or how we did in set matches. So that's tip number four, be mentally tough. Tip number five is to review our tennis playing schedule as well as our training schedule. So if a young competitive tennis player, it's not advisable to play in three to four tournaments a month. One to two tournaments a month would be perfectly fine. And in addition, we need to look at the number of days per we're playing tennis and the number of hours per day. So we definitely need you know, for our children to have one to two days off. So playing five days a week would be fine, but we don't want to be playing seven days per week as this leads to burnout as well as to overuse injuries. What about our strength and conditioning? Well, tennis does involve much agility, aerobic fitness, and anaerobic fitness. So if we want to do some cardio, it would be good to do, we could do once or twice a week running, but if we want to do three or times more a week of aerobic training, it should be bike or elliptical or workout, which would include weights three times per week. And yes, weight training is safe in children ages 12 and above. And we should be doing resistance band exercises on a daily basis, internal and external rotation, as well as shoulder, as well as scapular stability or seating and standing rows. So these are the five tips of the day, which are get your injuries checked out, get a tennis athlete profile, have an adequate nutrition and hydration plan, be mentally tough, and review your training and strength and conditioning programs. And this will definitely enable you to reach your peak performance in tennis.